So I'm here with Jessie Jo Jacobs. Uh, Jessie is a charity leader. Uh, she's a campaigner and formerly a mayoral candidate in the Tees Valley. Uh, Jessie, thank you for agreeing to have a conversation with me this morning about the White Ribbon campaign, um, which is bringing attention to the issue of violence against women and girls. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi Matt, it's really good to be able to join you in such an important conversation. Really pleased that uh, that you're taking up and that the, the men are taking up the conversation. <laughs> so I've just got a few questions for you. We won't talk for a, a tremendous length of time. The first one really is about the scale of the problem. You know, in your work, you've run a charity that supported, you know, women in all sorts of challenging circumstances, particularly young women. Um, what's, your, what's your impression of the scale of the problem? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a teen survivor of domestic violence myself. I set up a women's charity when I was 24 years old after meeting a girl who'd been sexually exploited on the streets of Stockton. Um, we worked with some of the most vulnerable and marginalised women, uh, women who were in this, like the sex trade. And I mean, the level of violence that they experienced was like off the chart. It was uh, absolutely devastating extreme violence um i think that's obviously the the most extreme end of the scale but it's shocking that that happens every day in our communities um but you only have to look more closely at the the numbers around women who experience domestic violence um in their lifetime how many women have been abused but every day women will experience some form of violence or gender-based prejudice. And I talk about gender-based prejudice um, and misogyny because actually that is where a lot of this is rooted. Um, so that outworks itself in simple ways. That if you walk down the street, past a guy and you're wearing a short skirt, are you gonna attract attention? Is that going to attract a comment? Uh, if you are walking on your own on an evening and there is a man around you, you might start checking, you know, like walking quicker, checking around, starting to automatically feel afraid. There are certain routes that you wouldn't walk. Um, I, I won't walk in the park at night. Um, you, you often have to make sure that you're walking with people. So the, the level of fear that is based around the violence that we know exists all around mm. us yeah. means that women are never fully free to just go and do what they want to do. That's really interesting that you've put attention on that. And I think that's really important that that, uh, that, that comes through this year uh, as the White Ribbon campaign sort of gets more attention that, uh, you know, whilst uh, we're putting the spotlight on acts of violence against women and girls, that actually, because acts of violence against women and girls are common, that creates fear that all women and girls experience. Uh, I, I mean, well, is that true? Would you say that is true, that all women and girls experience a fear of violence? No, I think the, the statistic is something like 98%, so, I mean, nearly all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, wow. Um, one of the things that I've heard mentioned is that certainly in the last few years since social media uh, has sort of arrived in our lives, that that has contributed to a sort of a sexist culture and a sexist climate um, and, and essentially provided new avenues in which, um, you know, women can be threatened and trashed in different ways. Uh, I mean, do you think that that's the case? Um. I don't know if it's increased it, but it's increased the ability of engagement between um, men and women. Um, I was in my local um, park a few months ago with a little museum and there's a sign from, I think it was the 1950s maybe or 1940s, but it says, it basically told, it said, it said to the men, like, don't grope the women. Um, so it was, it was quite telling that, that back kind of 80, you know, 70 years ago, that groping in public was a, obviously a very regular occurrence that had to have signs around saying, don't, you know, right. don't grope women. Um, and, and so I think that we've always had, uh, we've always had sexism. We've always had <clears throat> violence against women and sexual violence against women. Uh, but with the rise of the internet, that it gives people a, an opportunity to 
to voice their sexism, to voice their violence. And as a, a woman who ran in a political campaign, I experienced a level of that and, and definitely not as much as some of my counterparts, but it was there. And it, it, it could have been the, the simple things like, I'm a, run, a woman running for political office, so I therefore don't know what I'm talking about, to, um, to actually very be abusive and, and, and angry um, kind of language. And, and so running for public office, you know that's what you're going to put up with. You know that you will be treated differently to your male counterparts. And when you're on the internet, you're, it seems to people like you're fair game. Mm -hmm. If they've got a keyboard, they can comment on you about on what, what you look like, yeah. um, that kind of stuff. Mm. Interesting that you bring that historical sort of perspective in as well. Um, and I, I, I wonder to what extent the fact that this issue is escalating a little bit is that perhaps, uh, you know, men have expected to be held to behave towards women in certain ways. And now there's a kind of a, a pushback to say, no, that's that's not acceptable. Um, and therefore that's sort of creating a bit of friction and a bit of anger. But I think, you know, it's absolutely right that we do challenge that sort of behaviour uh, from men towards women. And I think that's the sort of focus of my sort of final question for you, Jesse, would be. Um, so you know, if, if, if we as men find ourselves in a situation where, you know, another man, whether it's a sort of a colleague or a mate or whatever, is sort of disparaging towards women, demeaning women in some sort of way, I think, I think you know, the kind of the men who see themselves as the good guys uh, actually by being silent are not really being the good guys. So, you know, what does what do, what are women looking for in terms of support from men? I think the first thing I want to say is something about um, there's been a big culture over the last few years about like what you know are you, about being woke and being a snowflake and this idea that if you stand up for causes of social justice that somehow mean, means you're a weaker man and I think we need to completely flip that because yeah. actually the bravery is in the one guy in the room that goes. I think you're out of order speaking about lasses like that. I think you're yeah. out of order with that joke that you made because actually what you're doing is you're going against you're go, you're going against the common flow actually, yeah. Yeah. and 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 that takes bravery and and to understand I guess what progressive masculinity means and what does it mean to be a, a, a man in the twenty you know twenty twenty one. Uh, is where the work I think needs to be done, mm. um, and so so I do think there's something about changing the culture of 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 what it means to be male and masculine and then i think that then also means that if you want to be an ally to a woman it's making your voice heard it's being mm. okay to be unpopular in that in the pub with the lads or on mm. the you know sort of after the footy game or whatever um and then simple things like the other week, actually, um, I was walking on my own and it was dark and there was a guy who's walking quite closely behind me. And I'd never seen this done before, but he, he kind of said, oh, I'm sorry, he, he, crossed, he crossed the road. He said, I, I, I know that might be, like, he basically did, but he said, I'm going to cross the road. So I know this is probably making you feel uncomfortable. And, um, and I thought, actually, I really... I really valued that he'd just seen me and he knew automatically, because I did. When mm -hmm. a guy comes up behind you, you feel scared. Mm -hmm. um, and so so, so I, I valued that he acknowledged yeah, that good, good uh, and, gave me the, and gave me that space. Um, and then I think it's about uh, online, like if you see comments, like reporting it, um, making sure that if it's someone in your workplace, like, sexism often can happen in the workplace and we need to make sure that those things are, are kind of called in as well and mm. that if 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 it's like your bosses are made aware that this is happening and even if it, all you did at the moment at the time is just recording it and making sure that it's tackled um or at least that it's noted Mm. then then you're kind of doing your bit it's basically yeah. what i'm saying matt is be proactive on this stuff yeah. Yeah. don't just sit back and watch things happen yeah great look thanks so much for your time this morning jesse that's really really helpful and uh yeah 
best wishes with all that you're up to at the moment in your campaigning work and uh, in your political career and everything else you're up to. Thanks so much. Thanks, Matt, and thanks for doing this. It's really important.